what's up everybody back again with another video so today you know I want to talk about business credit and things that we should be doing so this video is not so much for the gurus and you know the real experienced people out there who already got their businesses started but maybe you would hear something in this video that may be useful but we're not gonna spend a lot of time on the intro so let's get right to the video so this video is about building business credit when it comes to the trucking business, your trucking business, or anything that you want to do going forward with the business in general. So, first things first, you have to have a business name. Whatever it is you want to name your business, make it something that can be a little diverse, something that can transition from trucking into real estate, so on and so forth, because once you start building this, you want to be able to branch off and do other things with the business name with your business credit intact. With that being said, first things first, business name. Second thing is once you get your business name, a couple things you want to set up before you get started with the next steps is you want to have a business email address because you're going to need this to start your LLC or your incorporation or whatever it is you're going to do, whichever way you decide to go. You're going to need this. So go to google get a gmail get a yahoo get whatever one you want with the business name at gmail and that should be sufficient that should do just fine until you know you get everything on a professional level where it's like your business name or your name at your business name.com so on and so forth but for now the business name at gmail will do also next thing you want to do is you want to get a business address. Now you can do this a couple different ways. You can do USPS, Postal Service. You know, if you get a PO box, they will let you use the actual PO box address and your PO box number as your actual physical address. That's for free. It comes with the PO box. If you purchase a PO box, you can use that for free as a business address. If you don't have that available near you, you can also use UPS. You know, they have um, physical addresses. And if that's not an option for you as well, you can go online, just Google it. You can get a virtual address as a physical address, a virtual physical address. So those two things, you need a email address and you need a physical address when you apply at your secretary of state, your state's secretary of state, which mine is Georgia, once you go there, you can use these things to apply for your LLC and your corporation. Now, also to keep in mind, you should be doing this right now. If you're going to trucking school, if you plan to go off to trucking school and you know you have in mind that you're going to start a business, you're going to get your own truck later on, you might want to go ahead and already plan to get this already in rotation. And I say that because like while you take the time to gather your experience off at trucking school and you get your one year two year experience, guess what? That means your business is already one year, two years old. And that's gonna look good when it comes time for you to start building your business credit. So, that leads us to the third thing. Once you got your address and your email address, you're going to go to your Secretary of State, apply for your LLC, and apply for your a corporation. LLC or a corporation, whatever one you wanna do, you know, you wanna apply for that using the business email address that you created along with the physical address, business address that you created, okay? Now, this video is gonna be a little long because I'm gonna go through the step-by-step -step process, so I'm gonna try to speed through it. So if you need to go back to a part, you know, feel free to go back to the part of the video because we're going step-by-step -step here. So after you get your LLC back or your corporation back approved from your Secretary of State, the next steps is you wanna go to the IRS website all right and apply for your tax id number okay that should take you know it should give it back to you instantly once you get approved for your llc that business name all they're going to do is check the name that you use whatever name you came up with they're going to make sure nobody else is using it and they should approve it and once that comes back you'll be able to get you a tax id number using that business name that llc i know in georgia the price for the llc application is $100 the tax ID number is free so once you got your tax ID number you got your business name the next step is the Dunn's number Dunn and Bradstreet is free 
You might get somebody to call you and say, hey, look, I can get you your Dun & Bradstreet number, but it is free. You do not need to pay for this. It's also free. So the only thing that we pay for up to this point is the application for our LLC or our corporation. So that's $100 in Georgia. It might different. It might be different prices from state to state. It might vary, but $100, you start your business. Right? Now, once you have your corporation back, LLC or corporation, you apply for your IRS, your tax ID number, you apply for your Dun & Bradstreet. This might take about a month's time because it's going to take about one or two weeks for the LLC to come back. It's going to take about one or two weeks, maybe three weeks to get the Dun & Bradstreet number back and the tax ID number should be instant. But now we're talking about, we're, we're approaching a month time. So within a month time, you should have all of this set up and you're ready to start adding vendor accounts and stuff like that to your business. So that leads me to this next step, which is important to me and for everybody else if you're starting a business. So now some of us have already done this. Like if you already leased onto a company or you already have your tax ID number and your LLC and all that stuff, it's good to use that too if you're going to buy a truck and lease onto a company. So for me, if I was leased onto Landstar, I would have my own company and then I would lease on to I would lease onto Landstar under my business name. That way the revenue that I generate through Landstar or any company that I lease on my truck to, anybody you lease your truck onto, I'm just using Landstar as an example, you'll be able to apply with them and use your business name and they will be able to 1099 your business name and that way you're making business money, you're making money as a company, not under your personal social security number right so this applies to all of that so this applies to all of that and you can go ahead and start generating income under the business name also to building up your business age and your business credit so once you do that you want to start applying for business accounts vendor accounts now you could leverage your business by already getting business credit, if you have good credit or okay credit and you're able to get a credit card in your name um, and put the business name on it or get a business credit card in your name using yourself as a personal guarantee, you'll be able to jumpstart the business credit more efficiently that way. Now, other ways that you can get vendor accounts is through fuel cards. So make sure that you talk to Alec at RTS because I have a fuel card, a Fleet One fuel card. It's a great fuel card. I get discounts at Pilot, Flying J, and also reports to business credit. So that's one trade line already. Now, another one you can get, also too, there's no personal guarantee on that, all right? That's just on my business name. But before all of that, let's say you don't have any credit, your credit's not the best or whatever, what you can do is start with vendor accounts. You got Quail, Uline, Granger to start with those are three and then of course you can get a fuel card for your business so if you're an owner operator lease operator or independent contractor whatever you want to call it you should most definitely have a fuel card that way you're limiting the options for whether you leased on the total amount of deductions that's going to come out of your settlement right because you're paying for your own fuel anyway if you got your own fuel cards you'll be able to control that, what comes out on a daily, instead of using the company provided fuel cards. So if right now I'm telling you, if you leased onto a company, you might want to talk to RCS, get your own fuel cards. That way you can control your own fuel and it's not coming out of your settlement. That's number one. Number two, if you're leased onto a company right now, um, as an owner operator, you might want to look at getting your own plates, getting your own insurance. I know people go for the insurance, for the companies because it's a cheaper upfront cost. If you want to get RRP plates, meaning that you can go from state to state with your truck, it might cost you some money to get your plates upfront, your own plates. But in the long run, it's beneficial to you because you have your own plates, your own insurance. If you decide to go leave the company, lease onto another company or apply for your own authority, this step will already be done. You don't have to go through with it again. So, with that being said, um, you might want to get your own plates, get your own insurance, right? Okay, so, once you do that, now you're ready to apply for the vendor accounts. Like I said, Quail, Uline, 
Granger if you're not going to use your personal credit at all. Also, fuel cards. Fuel man, fuel card. You know, I'm I'm not a real big fan of the fuel man card because they have ridiculous fees if you miss a payment. It's like $89. I'm talking about one day, no grace period, and they're going to report it to your business credit. So you got to know what day it is because they could come out. You know, I've been late one or two times because I didn't know and I had to figure out what day was the report date. So if you didn't pay it by that day, they were reported as one day late on your business credit. Um, and that would, you know, count, count against you, of course. So with that being said, that's the next step. Those are, that's the steps if you don't want to use yourself as a personal guarantee. You're going to start building your business credit using Trade Lines, Quail, Granger, Uline, and your fuel cards. And that's how you can start building your business credit from the ground up, not using your personal credit to jumpstart it if you don't want to. Now, me personally, you know, I applied for a business credit card and in that way, it already gave my business some credit because I was able to go straight to credit cards. Also, too, I did, I did the trade lines, of course, because you want to get as many as you can. You want to get as many as you can. So I got Quail, Uline, Granger two fuel cards with RTS which is my favorite fuel card that's my main fuel card that I get fuel with um, I do use my fuel man fuel card because they let me get ga gas in my personal car so you know that's five and then I have business credit cards I have a business credit card with Capital One and I have another business credit card as well so those are the steps that you want to take. But the reason that I'm making this video is because if you're going through trucking school right now, this is something that you can do while you're going through school, gaining your experience. You can already get your business started. So when it comes time for you to buy a truck, put it under your business name, you will have all these things already set up, already ready to go. So I hope this video was helpful. Those are the steps you would need to do to get your business credit started. And just another tip for you, you can also use your business once you establish your business, you can use a DBA doing business as, you know, my company at realty.com or my company at whatever other business avenue you want to go down. You can use DBAs, but you already use the trucking foundation or already created the business foundation to start building business credit. And you can use that business to purchase equipment all without your personal guarantee all without you being personally responsible because you want ultimately all of this stuff your business to stand on its own you'll be able to purchase real estate you'll be able to buy or lease cars buy or lease trucks buy or lease you know equipment for your business so on and so forth so if your goal is to start a business in trucking whether you're leased on right now or you're going to go on and get your own authority, these are the steps that you can start right now and get already in motion so that when you come out of trucking school and you get done with being a company driver and you do decide to go get your own truck, you'll be ready to jump into the business with everything already started and created because you did that while you was already in training in trucking school and stuff. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Like I said, once again, for fuel cars, if you guys already are leasing your truck onto someone, you already have your plates, make sure you get those. And if you already are an owner operator, lease operator, get your own fuel cars, talk to Alec over at RTS. If you're getting your authority started, make sure you talk to Jacob over at RTS because those guys don't have any additional fees that I had to pay myself personally and I had to pay my way out of it. Now I'm with RTS on the fuel side, RTS on the factoring side, and everything is okay. So, if you like this video, make sure you like it, share, subscribe, and until next time, see you in the next video.